The mad geniuses behind Robot Chicken are cooking up their latest DC concoction with equal parts Batman, Superman, and the multiverse. We've got the creative team here to amuse our bouche with a taste of Robot Chicken DC Comics Special 3, Magical Friendship. The great thing about Robot Chicken is that these guys are super talented, they're funny, love working with them, and they give you a completely different interpretation of DC Universe and now, you know, the multiverse. So far out, I never expected to see anything like this. Yeah. Blew my mind. I used to spend countless hours with drawing paper and crayons, drawing Superman, Batman, Robin. And that's what I was thinking of when we got to write this special, just uh, how great it is to write these colorful characters ourselves. First question I have to ask you, how much research did you guys do on the DC multiverse, and how do you guys research? Is just reading a bunch of comics? Um, gosh, we had tons of comics just laying out in that writer's room. We're also big Piles comic of... geeks ourselves. We've been reading for pretty much all our lives, and we had Jeff Johns in the room, who's our, our supercomputer and could tell us anything we needed to know. I think we're just in the writer's room with everybody hanging out and talking and like, what's the next big idea? And, and we were focusing on Batman Superman, but we were looking at all these weird characters and someone just said, let's do Crisis, the Crisis of Robot Chicken. <laughs> and so we're like, well, that's big, like, can we do it? And, and yeah, like, so we, we, yeah, we did Crisis. Your special is all about the multiverse. Do you think you could explain the DC Comics multiverse to someone who has no idea what it is. Well, we actually ran into that problem when we introduced the Cosmic Treadmill, uh, which is a really ridiculous time travel device and universe splitting and combining device. I would say that for the Cosmic Treadmill, that we needed to strip away all the things that it can do and boil it down to one of the many things it could do, which was to open the multiverse. And as far as explaining what the multiverse is, it's a limitless storytelling device where there are endless incarnations of every version of the DC Comics world. You are not far from learning of the glory of Pez Luther. Pez Luther? <laughs> yeah, man. Lots it's of the multiverse. Yeah. His sex Luther persona has kind of evolved. Manifested into this, yeah, into yeah, a multiverse exactly. version of sex Luther. Yeah. He creates his own Superboy band. <laughs> when you see the animation, Oh, you're gonna lose it. It's so good. <laughs> you guys got to work with Burt Ward and Adam West. What was that like? I mean, it was it was surreal. I mean, for us, you know, we grew up watching that show all the time. Adam, you know, Seth had a little bit more of a direct line to him through Family Guy. <laughs> Burt Ward, I think, for all of us, was one of those where we just kind of geeked out because we didn't know what he was like. We never interacted with him before. And we, we were not sure we were going to get them. We didn't know that. We thought maybe we would get a good ask at Adam, but we no idea if Burt was going to be interested in doing this. And I wrote him a letter and he came to do it. <laughs> and he was so awesome. The second you hear his voice, you're like, oh yeah, that's yeah. that's Robin, isn't it? It's work time, baby. They had me playing myself playing Robin. In other words, there was a Robin, and then there was me as a Robin, and there's me as Burt Ward. So and they kind of had it all kind of mixed together. And I thought it was very creatively done. I mean, the people that came up with this, I mean, I just wonder, you know, they work during the day, but do they lock them up at night? I mean, you know, just the minds of these people are just so fertile with such wild and crazy ideas, and, and the production value is spectacular. You know, our animators are pretty dialed in to, to how we like things, how we like characters to move. Oddly, one of the most common notes is remember to put eyebrows on, on the characters. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, because, they, you know, everybody gets caught up in, in the excitement of the action action and then just launch them and then, you know, they'll get a few frames in and we'll say, you, you need to start over, so. Yeah, I directed the first couple seasons and um, for me it was always like continuity issues because mm -hmm. we shoot on so many stages at once, there are multiple versions of the same puppet mm -hmm. acting on different stages and different animators are essentially our actors and keeping not just like the eye line of the characters, mm -hmm. but the intent of the joke carrying over from stage to stage. This is an awful lot to juggle. Now for those of us, like myself, who haven't seen the special yet, what's one character we should be on the lookout for? Um, I was gonna Robin? Say, I was gonna say Johnny DC, oh, okay. but... <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, for me, Robin has some of the highlights of this special for me. It's the multiverse, though, and so yeah. it's the interaction between those characters and seeing the way culturally all of them have evolved over time and then seeing them how they're different. We, we at one point have the 60s Batman interact with the Arkham Asylum villains. 
from the video game. And it's just, that, that tableau is just unbelievable. You can check out RCDC3 this Sunday, October 18th at midnight on Cartoon Network's Adult Swim. And for more info on your favorite DC TV shows, comics, video games, and movies, make sure you click subscribe. Be a Superman, click subscribe.